So without further ado, I will introduce Senna. So Senna Senna Yi is from Toronto, where she writes poetry, prose, and film criticism. She is the author of the poetry collection, How Do I Look?, published by Metatron Press, and the children's book, My Day with Gong Gong. She is the managing editor and co-founder of the pop culture journal, In the Mood magazine. And I'm really excited to hear Senna read. Welcome, Senna. Good to see everyone today. <laughs> I'm going to read um, a few movie poems um, that I felt kind of spoke to some of the themes here. The first one's called Hardware. In the morning, I touch my phone and ask it about the weather. Sometimes I watch the radar for the storm's red eye crawling to my end of town. I ask my phone exactly when the sun sets, only so I can take photos. And that's the only way I can look right at the sun through the camera's black eye, before posting it as another blotch on our feeds. Long after it's gone, we still feel the sun's heat on our skin, our skull, even with the moon out, waning, warning. My phone heats up too when I make it work too hard. At night in bed, I feed my phone my biggest, quietest questions. I cradle it in my palms, outstretched, groveling in the dark. This one's called Everything Everywhere All at Once. You may have seen it. (laughs) How can you ignore lifetimes of pain and joy and dreams trapped in your cells? I've been thinking a lot about my ancestors after straying from them for so long. You know the drill by this point. I wanted big doe eyes. I thought Jade looked tacky. I'd even wince at the word ancestor. Sad, isn't it? to uproot your own roots. The first time I touched Asian soil, I cried without meaning to. Coming home, an ocean away from home. These days I try to talk to my roots because I hear that helps them grow, but what do I know? You and I have spent lifetimes growing apart, growing apart. And now I'm here buying a $20 jade pendant off Etsy from someone in the UK, another ocean away from home. The pendant arrives just days before I see this movie, and with it hanging around my neck, I notice Michelle Yeoh wearing the same one. Does it mean something? I don't think so, but I want it to. It's hard to explain. Sometimes I think, ancestors, if only you could see me now, drifting down the wrong road, fumbling my keys in the dark, dreaming my way back to you. I hope you'll still have me. I'll leave my shoes at the door and I'll boil the water. I'll bring you your slippers and I'll move your chair into the sun. And you'll squint and gently pull at the gold chain of my jade pendant and ask, is it real? This one's called Terminator 2, Judgment Day. (laughs) Yeah, also, you may have seen this one. (laughs) After she breaks his arm, Sarah Connor tells the doctor, there are 215 bones in the human body, that's one. Later in her Judgment Day nightmare, she watches everyone's skin turn to bones, turn to dust, turn to wind. Sarah's full skeleton remains intact, however, clinging to the chain link fence. Meanwhile, T-1000 is boneless, boundless. Meanwhile, I'm jealous. Think O-Town's Liquid Dreams music video. Think The Secret World of Alex Mack. Think ASMR slime videos. I dream of being beyond body and bones. Think structure, keeping me together. Think cage, keeping me from being gooey, pliant, one. This one's called The Thing. So what if I trust everyone, everything, right away? Give me one reason why I shouldn't. Tell me why I shouldn't believe that my body is what it is, that my skin can contain everything moving around inside of me, that my ribs will stay intact when I burst a belly laugh, that my heart will keep beating while I sleep. Who's to say? I watch the moons of my nails wax and wane and wax and wane. I pick at the skin on my head like an animal. I am an animal and an animal that no one trusts. No one, nothing is scarier than someone exactly like you, who everyone is scared of. 
This one's called No Country for Old Men. What do I dream of the most? Well, let's see. Money, mommy, heaven, hell, you tell me. I'll keep retracing my steps over yours if that will lead me to it. Sure, maybe I'll never catch up to you, but you'll be the one always looking back at me. Watching me pause to rest under the same sharp shade. Watching me watch our ghosts echo on blank TV screens, lapping leftovers. You know, whenever you come to me in a dream, I wonder if it's you or God telling me to believe. And when I wake up, all I can remember is that feeling. You know it, I just said it. Gazing over your shoulder, straight ahead at what waits behind. Suspiria. Sometimes when I was young and would find stray strands of hair on the floor, I'd flinch with disgust. A part of me, a part. I'd react the same to dust, knowing it was dead skin. I often forget my skin is alive. Sometimes I scratch it in my sleep and it cracks and bleeds, and I wake up and twist my neck like a swan to look back at myself in the mirror and inspect the damage. And then my skin heals and scars and fades all by itself, without me telling it to, because it is alive, I am alive. Sometimes I fold my body in half to look at the hair on my shins and it looks alien. Sometimes I pluck it or wax it or shave it so I can be happy for a little bit as a skinned little thing. And then the hair grows back in shards. If you had to choose, would you prefer to jump or to crawl out of your skin? I'm most scared of a live body dripping and hairy. This one's called The Fly. How can you change, become the world, when you can't even change, become yourself? Frightening, isn't it? To not know who you could be, could have been. Lugging around your own body for years, so heavy, so soft. Stretching your sagging skin as you flit about in circles, squares, trying to chase a new legacy. This one's called First Cow. I watch a lot of silent ASMR vlogs on YouTube. No talking, just loud, crisp sounds of women doing housework. Chopping, cleaning, cooking, caring. It gives me shivers and warmth at the same time. Some might say these vlogs work as an anti-capitalist call to non-action. Many of them explicitly tell us in their captions to slow down and find joy in everyday moments, nature, food we nourish our bodies and our loved ones with. If we have the luxury to stop and soak our skin in it, survival can seem like an escape. But unlike these vlogs, this movie reminded me that sometimes, maybe most times, surviving just isn't enough, even if we want it to be. Whether we're running uphill or lying down to rest, survival can seem like a trap. This one's called Death Becomes Her. I'm so careful that I don't think my body knows how to live, only how to survive. The other night, when trying to get the recommended seven to eight hours of sleep, I lay awake thinking about how we're trapped in the same skin, same bones since birth, and we just grow and grow until we can't anymore, and then we just rot and rot until we can't anymore. I just got four hours of sleep. <laughs> if I knew I'd live forever, I wouldn't treat my body like a temple. I put it through hell. Instead, I do burpees in poor form and floss my red gums pink and pluck my eyebrows until I sneeze and squish my chest pimples into scars. It's just different. And just a few more. This one's called Don't Look Up. Just please tell me how it ends. Actually, no, just tell me how I go. You see, I can't take it anymore. I have nothing left to give. It's easy to care, even easier not to. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I want to be better, but I don't know how or how much time I have. If I knew I had no time left, I'd like to think I'd do something, be someone, go somewhere different. But the truth is that I'd still only pray when I want something to go my way, and I'd still go to church only if I wanted to remember how it feels to be around people who believe in something. What do I know about worship? I wanted to be baptized only so that everyone could look at me. It's a true story. <laughs> and this last one is called Showing Up. Listen, if I didn't have to do this, I wouldn't, would I? Sitting at my laptop, dangling a carrot in front of myself, self-hypnosis. I don't know much, but I do know that when I don't know how to properly express a feeling, like that I'm so much smaller, yet smarter than this, than that, it's agony. Ooh. <laughs> Looking up a rival who doesn't know I exist, just existing. 
looking up the Greek roots of agony, and it comes from struggle, but also contest. Picking at a wound, self-inflicted, while it's self-healing. Picking at a poem, like this one, that should already be done. Thanks. <laughs>